So today we've got our 08 Dodge truck with a 6.7 Cummins turbo diesel. And this truck's got some issues with the turbo. It's actually stuck in one position, the actuator is not working properly, and we suspect there's a lot of carbon buildup in this thing. So we're going to go ahead and swap out the turbo. It's not really that bad of a job, but there's a couple intricacies we have to follow here. We've got our new turbo here. The turbo came with the gaskets, seals, everything we need to install this turbo. And we're also going to recommend going ahead and replace the crankcase breather assembly. Now this is mounted up underneath the valve cover there. And anytime we replace a turbo, it's a good idea to replace any associated filters or breather assemblies. We want this thing to be breathing good, clean air. Also, while we've got it off, we want to make sure that we've got good oil feed and a good oil drain, as well as clean coolant passageways. This is a lubricated and cooled turbo by oil and coolant. So we want to make sure that we've got good supply to both of those areas, as well as good drains. This turbo comes with the new actuator, as I mentioned. This is already calibrated to work with this turbo, and it's got a brand new speed sensor on it. So this thing is really ready to go. So let's get our old turbo out of there and put our new one in. Okay, so we've gone ahead and disconnected the mass airflow sensor and the intake air temp sensor and disconnected a hose that go, connects the crankcase ventilation system to the air intake. So we're gonna set the air box out of the way. Once that's out of the way, you can see that we've got our air line here, or our breather line. We can kind of set up to the side. Grab my flashlight. You can see down in there by the turbo a little better. We can see our oil supply line. We can see our electrical connectors, our coolant supply line. All those are going to get disconnected, as well as the outlet boot. And we have the exhaust clamp back here. A couple electrical connectors. Disconnect the studs from the exhaust manifold, and this thing's ready to come out. All right, so now as you can see, we've got the oil lines loose, got the coolant lines loose, disconnected the electrical connectors. We've even gone ahead and pulled the battery off. And we've made sure to disconnect the other battery as well. We don't want to be arcing anything electrical while we're coming through here. So now that's all disconnected, we're going to grab the turbo, pick it up. I'm going to rotate it a little bit to get it to come up out of here. We'll get everything lined up properly and pull it out. Then we'll get ready to test the oil feeds and make sure we can install our new turbo. Next up, we're going to test the oil feed to the turbo. Even though this turbo didn't have an oil type problem, we still want to verify we have good clean oil feed before we get to it. But before we do that, I'm going to unplug the injectors electronically here. I'm just going to use a little pick disconnect it here and there's another connector in the back here now disconnect both of these this will electronically disable the fuel injectors and so it's going to allow us to crank the engine over we'll take a look at the amount of oil coming out of the oil feed to the turbo and then if it's good we'll be ready to install our new turbo again okay so now i've gone ahead and reconnected the oil feed line you can see it comes off the oil filter housing here we had to pull that out in order to get the turbo out previously. But I've just hooked it back up. Now I'm gonna take a container here and I'm gonna put the oil feed line in here, have an assistant crank the engine over and we're gonna just make sure that we've got good oil coming out of this. Go ahead and crank it. Okay. All right, as you can see, we've got a good steady stream of oil. Now we had to do a little bit of cranking previously because this line was off and a little bit of oil bled out. So once we got the air out of the system, this thing, as you can see, had a good steady stream of oil flow going here for the turbo. So now we're confident that when we install our new turbo, we're not gonna be starving it for oil. This is always a very important step to take. So we've got our new turbo and our old turbo sitting side by side here. We've already gone ahead and installed the new studs that came with our new turbo. And the only thing we really need to transfer over now is this oil fitting. We'll swap that over. Our new kit came with some new O-rings there to seal it up. So we'll swap that over and we're ready to install this thing back in the truck. All right, so we've got our old turbo off. Let's take a look at the actuator here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the four bolts holding the actuator to the turbo. 
Then we're gonna do a little test here. Now typically you might do this on the vehicle. You have to make sure the actuator doesn't move because then you're in big trouble. You can't recalibrate this actuator. But we're gonna get in there and we're gonna look at the mechanism that actually moves the vanes on the turbo and see if we have a full range of motion here. Okay, so I've got my four bolts out. Now let's pull this off and I'm gonna set this off to the side. Well, first off, you'll notice inside of here is an electric motor. That's what rotates against this lever, which moves the vanes. Now, you can see it takes a lot of effort for me to get this thing moving. And now if I go all the way to the one side, there's a hole in there, which I should be able to line up my tool, indicating that it's all the way to the one position. And I should freely be able to rotate this all the way back to the other side. And you can see kind of the edge of the hole there. I'm not able to get it fully all the way over, back and forth. So this is an indication of a carboned up turbo. And so, again, we've made the right call here. We've decided to go ahead and replace this turbo because of the lack of motion. This should move back and forth from stop to stop very freely. This particular one doesn't. All right, we've got our components transferred over here. We've pulled the oil feed line off again, uh, disconnected our batteries again once we did our oil cranking test there. So now we're ready to install this thing. We're gonna slide it down in the hole, rotate it. And we're actually gonna start it by the threads on these studs here, get it hanging. Then we'll wrestle our exhaust pipe into place, get that clamped down. Then we'll work on our oil and coolant feed lines. So let's slide this thing in. All right, so we've got our new turbo in, we've tightened all the connections, we've got it torqued up to the manifold here, got our exhaust clamp in tight, plugged in our electrical connection, we've gone ahead and installed the, the air intake. One thing we need to do here is install a brand new high quality air filter. Again, we need to protect the investment on the turbo. Now, once this is done, we'll install the battery. We're gonna go ahead and replace the, the crankcase breather we talked about earlier uh, underneath the valve cover here and we'll top off the fluids here. This thing's ready to fire up and run. So let's go ahead, install a breather and air filter in a minute, and we'll get to it. All right, now we've got everything else kind of buttoned up over here. We haven't topped off our fluids yet, but we're gonna go ahead and replace this crankcase breather filter. So I've removed all the bolts all the way around the housing here, pulled the cap up off, and it's gonna be attached to the line in the back here, breather hose, but we can kind of pull it up, set it off to the side, and then we'll pop the old one out of here. I'm gonna make sure that all the rings come out in seals with this old one, but I'm gonna take a little bit of this engine oil off of here. I'm gonna lubricate the new ones. We don't wanna cut one of these seals. And then we're ready to install the new one in place. Now we don't want to get too aggressive in pounding it down, but just gently tap it by hand here. Then we'll take our cover, install it back on the breather line that goes over to the turbo and set it down. We'll snug it all up, torque it in place, put the cap on, and we're ready to top off our coolant. And we're gonna go ahead and replace the oil and filter on this. We want clean oil going to our turbo and we're ready to start the truck up, verify that we did our job properly. Okay, so now you can see we got this truck running. We've double checked the oil, double checked the coolant here. Everything seems to be good. We're gonna idle for a while, let the oil circulate through the turbo here. Then we're gonna take it out for a verification test drive. Hopefully now you understand how to replace the turbo and Dodge truck with a common 6.7 liter turbo engine.